The Legal Fuel Speaker Series, Better Lawyer, Better You. Legal Fuel is the practice resource center of the Florida Bar and a benefit to Florida Bar members. This ongoing speaker series will feature seasoned leaders from Florida's legal community who represent a wide spectrum of legal expertise and practice. With a focus on the fundamentals of today's legal practice, topics include finance, technology, human resources, marketing, client development, and day-to-day operations of your law firm. The Legal Fuel Speaker Series is brought to you by Florida Lawyers Mutual Insurance Company. Florida Lawyers Mutual, defending the reputations of Florida attorneys since 1989. Go to flmic.com to learn more about the company created by lawyers for lawyers. We are now proud to present you the following. I'm Eugene Pettis, and we're going to discuss building a gold reputation. We all have a desire to have a reputation that will fuel our careers, our community, our personal lives. Today we're going to discuss some ideas of how to strengthen the possibility of having the reputation that we desire to have. Jeffrey Fry is quoted as saying, a reputation is what you hear when no one is there to speak for it. What he's saying is the reputation is what people think of you, what they believe of you, even in your absence. Our presentation goes today is that during this presentation will we discuss the role of your reputation in developing your career. I hope that it will stimulate some thoughts that will lead you to some self-reflection, to come up with an individualized plan of how you can strengthen your reputation. I'm a believer that it's very important uh, in order to advance whatever the skill is such as having a gold reputation, you need to think about it and personalize it so that you'll come up with a plan that works for you. And throughout the course of this presentation, I hope that you'll be self-centered in thinking what can work for you in building that gold reputation. You know that you want a good reputation, but do you know why you want a good reputation? It's very critical that In my life, in my career, I've always tried to have that five-year plan of what it is I want to achieve, why do I want to achieve it, and then I can come up with the roadmap that's going to best get me to that particular goal. In this particular case, just wanting a reputation uh, of some sort is not enough. You have to know why you want that gold reputation and how you're going to put it into action. Why is a reputation important? It's important because it isn't just one aspect of your life. It is made up of all of the components of your life. It doesn't just affect one area. It permeates and influences all aspects of your life, your personal life, your professional life, your career, your family, your community, all of the components that we all have encircling our lives. Your reputation is at the center point of that and how people perceive you in those various circles that we all move in on a daily basis. Your reputation is that interconnected system that fuses itself. It's not just one piece, all of the pieces come together within that reputation. And as a result, a good reputation is a must for people that want to continue to grow and to enjoy the fruits of, of life. When we're talking about the component parts of a reputation, you, you know, you hear different terms of what makes up a reputation and it's multifaceted, but some of the common elements that we hear is the trust factor. We all want to be trusted. That's a, a common ingredient in your reputation. One who has integrity, one who has honor, honesty, the stature of that individual in the community. Those are the various parts of a reputation that we all need to think about uh, as we have this discussion. When does your reputation start to develop? People ask that question often and the truth is your reputation starts from second one, when you arrive on the scene or whatever the occasion is. It could be your first day on the job. There's a reputation uh, from the first impression that they had with you through the interview process. That reputation evolves over time but your reputation starts to develop 
from minute one, from the second someone meets you, read about you, hear about you, they're already forming the reputation from their perspective. People don't wait until they know that they have all the information about you to decide whether they like you or make sure the information is accurate. There is no validation oftentimes of the information. They use the information or the impressions that they readily have available and make a decision. Your reputation is that readily available information that folks have from whatever the sources may be. And in this day and time, many of the sources may be sources outside of your control. And we're gonna talk about the influences of social media and other information pathways that we have in our lives today. Those are pathways of information that people utilize to get the impression and to develop that reputation that you may have. The reputation is, is such a powerful element of who we are. I would like to call it the power of reputation. Our reputation is that platform on which our efforts are judged. Whether it's the client development that we're all engaged in in some way as lawyers or jury trial. I'm a trial lawyer, so that reputation precedes me oftentimes when I stand before that jury. Evidentiary hearings that you may have in front of the court. Your reputation is a powerful element of how that process, whatever the legal role may be, is going to come out and turn out. Or any number of tasks that we do as lawyers and undertake as lawyers. For an example, I was reflecting on uh, an experience that most of us have had as young lawyers. And I asked, have you ever had that experience as a young lawyer that you were well prepared for a hearing? I mean, you dotted your I's and crossed your T's, you read the case law, and you believed that the case law was on your side. Sometime I've had case law on all fours, and you still lost the hearing to a more seasoned practitioner, and you leave the hearing fuming. How could that happen? I had the best argument, I presented it uh, the most effectively, and I still lost. Many times the difference was simply reputation, or the lack of reputation there is of a younger lawyer. It's not that you didn't have the best argument, but you may have been going up against someone who was more seasoned with a greater reputation, and the benefit of the doubt went to them on that argument. That's just one example of the power of reputation. Your reputation is impacted by everything that you do. We spoke a little earlier about the interconnectedness of the components of a reputation, and it's true. Each and everything you do during the course of the day touches upon, influences your reputation. Every interaction, every last detail of what you do right down to your body language is a factor that affects your reputation. Many times your reputation is being judged when you don't even know that people are observing you. What they're seeing in body language uh, is, is, are you presenting yourself in the manner in which you hope you're portraying? Sometimes there's a disconnect. If we're slouched over, yet we're saying something positive, sometimes the message is lost by the posture that you're holding. If you're talking too loud, if you're being too aggressive, no matter the content, that's being observed, that's being taken in by those that are observing, and they're developing an impression that leads to your reputation. It's very important that you know that reputations are not built, maintained, and established in a silo. They're exposed to all the elements of our lives, all of the action that surrounds and involves our lives. And that's why it's important to know that when you're trying to develop that gold reputation, you're conscious of every single aspect uh, of, of your day. Uh, the fact of the matter is, when we're looking at managing our reputation, that is, once you've established it, how do you manage it? it's very important that you recognize that your reputation is everywhere. An indicator of the importance of your reputation is that it's everywhere is that you have online presence today. If you are involved in any particular organization, if you have an office, you hold an office, if you're writing, if you're out there on Facebook, 
If you're out there on any of the social media outlets, oftentimes there's a footprint online uh, that's creating and influencing your reputation. You have a website. How does that website project you? How does it project your firm? Is it consistent with the reputation that you're desiring to establish? That online presence, personality profile is very important. Social media engagement, we're all involved in some aspect of social media. I think it's impossible today not to be engaged in some way, uh, whether you're a blogger, whether you're active on Facebook or Twitter, etc. We're coming and interfacing more today than ever with social media. What we do in those spaces is critical. And what, you know, as we go into a younger generation who have lived their entire lives with social media, what they did in college, what they did in high school leaves a footprint that can spill over and influence that reputation in the course of their professional lives. I've had many cases in which the case has turned on the footprint of social media. Uh, the person could have been uh, clearly injured, but if that reputation that they had in reality before the injury is there and discovered, it impacts the reality and the outcome of their case. That's why it's critical as lawyers, as professionals, that we recognize that we have a duty to ourselves to build a reputation and to manage it, to maintain it. It's very, very critical. And you have to understand uh, that that reputation is your work product, the timeliness, your demeanor. What are those things that people are judging you on? That's your offline reputation. We've talked about the online reputation being your website, your social media uh, presence. That offline reputation is equally critical, and that's what they're seeing with how you're presenting your work product to the court. Your timeliness, your per, uh, per personal and professional demeanor, those are all components of an offline reputation that's very, very important. And are you spending your time in a critical manner? And with whom are you spending your time? It's very difficult. You've heard the old adage uh, that you, you're influenced by the company that you keep. It's important that you recognize this ties into your reputation. You could be a saint. However, if you're spending your time with people that has less reputable uh, uh, public uh, impressions and reputations, you're going to be influenced by that. So understand there are two components when we're discussing uh, your reputation and reputation management, that you're not just limited to your online presence, but you're also looking at your offline presence and the activities that you're participating in both of those scenarios. The question is often asked, is there a difference between personal and professional reputation? We all would love to have a very clear and decisive line between our public and our private lives. But today, more than ever, that line is being blurred. Uh, your reputation is being influenced. And as lawyers, there is aspects of life that whether it was in private, it still influences our public and our professional uh, careers. In, in an ever increasing way, there's an interconnected world that we live in uh, that has less separation between private and public. As a professional, Public eyes are always on you. Know that. Know that people are always observing you. Even if it's on the weekend, that you're at Home Depot in shorts, taking care of your private affairs. People are looking at you, and depending on how they judge you at that time, that's going to carry over into your private life. That reputation is going to carry over into your public, uh, professional life. And that's not a bad thing because you should be maintaining a good reputation and activities that build upon a good reputation at all times. And therefore, that which you do private can help build that public uh, reputation that you desire. Let's talk about some of the things that may be on the private side of your reputation. You leave the office at five o'clock on Friday. You're, you're on your own time, uh, so to speak 
in your private time. You have activities such as you may be at the ballpark with your children, out at the ball field. I've coached little league sports and I've seen individuals, parents who are just rabid fans uh, uh, and get carried away and forget the game is one in which it's about the kids and it's about developing uh, certain uh, character traits that we want our kids to have. Parents lose uh, sight of that and oftentimes go overboard with their enthusiasm is a nice way to put it. If you see someone like that, do you believe that that carries over to your image when you see them again on Monday? I think the answer is absolutely it does. So just because we're on private time, know there's a connection to how that influences public. And you can flip that story. People that do good on their private time, you go to church, you're serving your community, you're in a space in which you're in a very positive light uh, in the eyes of those that are observing and judging and helping build and maintain that reputation, that private, those private activities carries over and can help boost your public professional reputation. Do not think for a moment in 2019 uh, that public eyes are not always on you and that can be an enhancer or it can be a distractor. It depends on how you want to live your life and help manage and maintain your reputation. Once you have that reputation, you must maintain it. Our society, our news is filled with examples of people who had a reputation and they lose it in, in, in no time. It was uh, Warren Buffett, the great Warren Buffett, who said it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. 20 years to build it, but five minutes to ruin it. And in many instances, it takes even less time to crash what you've taken a lifetime to build. Given the power it has over your success, the importance of managing your reputation is a no-brainer. Managing your reputation is a combination of both building it as well as monitoring and maintaining it. One of the examples that uh, was called to mind in how you lose that reputation or if you recall, for those you may be a little too young, uh, O.J. Simpson. It was a time in the 80s and 90s that O.J. Simpson was the most highly rated pitch man on television. He was the face of Hertz rent car He could do no wrong. You had him pitching your product, it was gold. That's a positive reputation that he built from his years of being a Heisman Trophy winner, built from being a great running back, Hall of Fame running back. We know how that story ended. Uh, in just a matter of minutes, in, in a given day, that reputation was lost. Whatever you may believe on the case of, of O.J. Simpson, uh, the murder case that he had, he could never, ever recover from that. That reputation that he had for so many years, in fact, over a decade, was lost uh, on one single episode in his life, despite the fact that he was acquitted of the charges initially, he still had ruined and lost his reputation. We see that in so many aspects of our lives. You see it in politics. You see it in, 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 in every walk of life. And folks, you see it within the legal practice. You need not go further than to look at our bar journal and look at uh, the bar news and you look at individuals who've had their licenses pulled, suspended, you've been disbarred. As bar president, I had the responsibility of, of, of giving those discipline charges to various individuals and some of the decisions that they made crashed, ruined their careers forever. That's why you can't just focus on the building side of your reputation. You must recognize that once you have achieved that reputation, it must be maintained. So we've talked briefly about the, why is a reputation so important. We've talked about how it interplays with our careers, our lives, how there's no separation between truth as a professional, private and public lives. 
it's all interconnected uh, in our world of the legal uh, sphere that we work in. So one of the things that's really important uh, is that you know you have to maintain both. We touched a little earlier on social media. We're living in a different world today. It used to be the old adage that uh, people hear things by word of mouth. When I grew up here in Fort Lauderdale, word of mouth was a much slower, smaller community. It took a longer time to get the word around the community. We had a very few television channels. The TV went off at ele after the 11 o'clock news, literally shut down. There was no more news coverage until the next morning. We, hadn't, we didn't have, obviously, any social media or internet capabilities. Word of mouth had a slower pace, so therefore people were able to sometime recover from missteps. There is no secret uh, that the dissatisfied clients that we uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis share their complaints with others. In the old days, that used to be shared literally uh, by word of mouth. When you see people, you may mention it to them that you didn't have a good experience. But today, that word of mouth has been generated through roughly 2.2 billion users of our internet. The damage caused by today's word of mouth is a whole new arena for us individually and for us as lawyers. Users can spread negative comments in just a few seconds with minimal effort. They can do it on their cell phones without even having to go to a computer. With social media sites such as Twitter, it can take just 140 characters to post a complaint for 140 million users to see, and your brand is impact and the image will suffer from that. So give context to why it's so important to maintain your, your attention to your reputation in the client context. I have built a career making sure that client service is first. That was a slogan that I had in my practice decades ago, and I lived by that. No matter what, I want to make sure that each and every client will hopefully be my best mouthpiece to the next potential client. So I want to make sure I serve them, I, I'm attentive to their needs, I'm keeping them informed of what's going on in their cases. That's an area that I hear more than ever that clients are upset with their lawyers because the lawyer is not advising them to what's happening in their case. That's easy. That's easy. If you're giving that level of client service and making sure that the client is first, then you're going to have a satisfied client no matter what the outcome is. So often, they're not concerned just with the outcome, they're concerned with the effort that you gave to deliver them the service. That's how you can counter the impact of social media to make sure if they're posting something, if they're passing on word of mouth about your service, they're passing on something that's very positive, something that's going to continue to enhance that reputation as opposed to distract from that reputation. We touched upon the interconnectedness between reputation and success. You cannot have one without the other, in my opinion. A good reputation enhances the likelihood of success. And the inverse is also true. A bad reputation makes it more difficult to be a success. A good reputation is like fertilizer for your success. A bad reputation is like a fungus, always distracting and destroying your best efforts. My reputation grows my legal practice and my legal practice enhances my reputation. I've had many experiences based on the reputation that I've tried to build for 34 years as a lawyer, that they've been influenced by things that I've done years ago. Good deeds years ago are part of the foundation that I stand on today. And that foundation precedes my arrival to a certain moment in time. That foundation is what people have gone and talked about, heard about, before they walk into my office. That good reputation fuels the likelihood that I'm gonna have a successful relationship. 
I've developed relationships with a lot of corporate clients, individual clients, municipalities. All of those relationships are built on the reputation. And the enhancement of my success comes from the fact that I've always given top line attention to developing a good reputation. So know that when we're talking about success, you can't have, in my opinion, long lasting success without doing something to build and maintain that positive reputation. Everybody can hit the lottery and have luck even without a good reputation. But I assure you that that doesn't, lightning doesn't strike often in that manner. And it's very hard to sustain it if you didn't take the time to build a lasting positive reputation as a central foundation of your life and of your career. Let me share with you my personal journey in building my reputation. I create call. I started practice in 1985. I'm born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, but I hadn't been here since my seven years attending school and uh, undergrad and law school at the University of Florida. I returned to my hometown uh, and I started from moment one conscious of the importance of building that foundation called reputation. How did I do it? One of the things that I did was, despite the fact that I didn't know any lawyers in town, I, I, I didn't come up in a family of lawyers, I didn't have the lawyers that I interacted with, so I was new to the profession of law. But I had a determination to get up and connect with the community. That connection is a part of the effort of building that reputation. I got engaged as a younger lawyer, and I don't think you just have to be a younger lawyer, even if you're a lawyer in your mid years or late years, it's never too late to engage, and it's certainly never too late to enhance that reputation. I volunteered for committees at the Broward County Bar. I literally went in, spoke to the president, and said, I want to get engaged. That's a bold step, but if you're serious about your reputation, you must be willing to take bold steps that are going to enhance your career and enhance your reputation. I ran for president of the T.J. Reddick Bar Association, the African American Bar Association in Broward County, Florida. I was a four to five year lawyer when I served a two year term. These were veteran lawyers, some of the greats of our time, the George Allens, the Henry Latimers. Literally, I would go and pick up the namesake of the organization, a first African-American judge in Broward County, T.J. Reddick, I would pick him up at his home to make sure he was at my meetings. I wanted to be a part of the community. I wanted to be a part of the bar. I wanted to build my professional clout. And I ran for president and I tried to build that organization over my two terms to be something special. People observe that type of leadership. People observe those efforts and that's doing good, which is a part of our creed as lawyers, do public good. But it's also building your base, building your reputation and building the foundation that you're going to stand on for decades to come as a professional and more importantly, a foundation you're going to stand on as an individual person. I was elected uh, shortly thereafter to the National Bar Association's Florida chapter as vice president on a statewide level. And shortly after that, I got uh, a call from Governor Childs, the late Governor Lawton Childs, and asked me would I serve on the Board of Governors of the South Florida Water Management District. I didn't even know what that was at that time. And I said, when do you need to know? They said, we need to know tomorrow. Uh, I called some friends and elected officials. I said, what would you do? And both of them said, if I had that offer, I would do it. It's a, it was a very distinguished, very important board, a huge regional board in the state of Florida. And as 31 years of age, I was the youngest person they had ever appointed at that time and the first minority that they had appointed. How did that happen? Did they just pull it out of the sky? Or was that a reputation uh, that I had built as a person that can serve and serve our state and serve our South Florida region with dignity and with skill. I think it's the latter. I think that would not have happened but for all the other things that I had done to work on my reputation. 
You don't work on your reputation just to have a good reputation. In my opinion, I've always tried to work on that reputation to do good, to do good for a client, to do good for my community, to do good for all those that I'm trying to serve. And if you're doing it for those unselfish reasons, sometimes it rains blessings upon you and your career. And that's what happened, I believe, as the appointment to the South Florida uh, Water Management District. And then I was appointed, not appointed, I ran for an office uh, to be on the Board of Governors of the Florida Bar in 2005. I got a call when the late Henry Latimer, uh, unfortunately, was killed in an auto accident. And there were some judges of Broward County Circuit Court that said, we need you to serve. Why did they call me? It's because from the day I started practicing law, I had started working on serving that effort of serving was a part of my reputation. And when they saw the need for someone from Broward County, I get the call and asked to serve. In 2005, I won a four person race and the rest is history. In 2013, 14, I had the pleasure of serving as the Florida Bar President, uh, which is one of the high honors of my life. That's the importance of how I think you need to look. And every one of our paths will be different. The bar is a beautiful place to build that uh, reputation and get some of those skills. But you need not come through the bar. There are so many ways that you can work to do good, to build a reputation that's positive, that enhances your work, your profession, and your life. The Florida Bar is one of the great places to do that. And I'll touch upon that uh, a little uh, later. The community that we serve. I served in the community as on Broward Community College's foundation for 17 years. Uh, that was, again, a community. I, I went from the professional outreach and I got into my community, served the board. How did that happen? I talked to the president of the Broward College at that time, Will Holcomb. He was a neighbor of mine. I went to him and asked him, I would like to serve on the board. And I served on that board and that service led to three years chairing the foundational board and relationships that I literally still have today each and every week. I interact with people that I met there in very favorable ways in which those efforts, that reputation still many decades later is still fueling my career and leading to successes. And I've served my church in many different ways, currently serving as the general counsel. So I raise those not to say you have to go and get these particular components, but you see that a reputation is built on a multifaceted platform. It's really important that you find your own footing, find out what you're comfortable doing, but know that each and every aspect of your life can be a part of the pillars that build the foundation on which you're going to stand as a successful professional. You just have to commit to it, you have to believe in it, and you have to know that there is an interconnection between your success and your reputation. Bar associations are very, very uh, positive ways of, of, of getting engaged and building that reputation. They're fertile ground to grow that reputation. There are so many committees in the Florida Bar. There, the, each and every president-elect appoints over 600 individuals to commit committees. Some of the committees are doing excellent work. And you meet people and you have an impact on your career. You want to develop your professional career? Think how impressive it will be to a client if you're saying that I'm working on a committee that's helping shape the law that governs your area of, of business. That's very impressive. That comes from getting engaged on the various committees uh, within your bar association. It need not be on the state level. It need not be on the national level. It could be on the local level. It could be on the regional level. The practice of law has so many opportunities for committee organizational engagement. And I, 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 I highly encourage every lawyer to do so. Uh, I don't think that we can be the, 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 great of, the greatest of professionals if we're not willing to spend time on our profession. I think it's critical that we spend time and pass this profession on to the next generation 
And in doing that, it will enhance your reputation. You don't just go and get involved in organizations. We can all go show up at an organization and, and say, I'm a member. But if you want a real good reputation, it requires more than just being a member. Get engaged and take on assignments, take on program tasks, volunteer your time. You don't have to be the chair of the effort, but you could be a committee member to work on something and be a part uh, of, of the success that enhances your reputation. Meet with leaders within the organization. Take people out. You can go to a committee organizational meeting and you see 20 people uh, in the organization and every month, every couple of months you come to the meeting, you see them, you say hello. But I often ask people, do you really know the members of that organization? Have you taken time to truly get to know them? It's really important that you remember that reputation enhancement comes from connectivity. What do I mean by that? Take time to look at your membership and say, you know what, in 2019, I'm going to take the time to meet. Let's go have coffee. Speak to Susie, speak to John. Let's spend 30 minutes over coffee to truly get to know uh, those individuals and give them a different impression of you, of engagement, and you will therefore give them a different impression. And guess what their impression is going to be of you that you reached out. It's gonna be an enhanced impression, thus an enhanced reputation because you're showing the desire to connect. Take advantage of programs that will enhance your networking skills and opportunities, but those things don't happen magically. Opportunities like that don't fall out of the sky. You have to be bold and make them happen. So that effort of building that reputation has a few important parts that I want to summarize. You have to recognize that as a young lawyer, you may have to start from the bottom and work yourself up. Don't let that be a deterrent. We all started at some point in time, but you need to start and then work on it every day. No matter what your, your, your job is, no matter what the billable hour demands are, it's critical that you, see, you save some time to work on your reputation, work on your professional skills, because those are gonna be the things that carry you in the future. Billable hours are important, but they don't necessarily enhance uh, the reputation outside of your firm. So make sure that you're always willing to start from the bottom and work on your reputation every day. I mentioned earlier a couple of examples of being bold and being willing to make the ask. Make the ask of being engaged. Make the ask of being put on a committee. Make the ask of your firm leadership to be engaged. That's how reputations are built because people want folks that are committed to doing better and reaching for higher goals. Whatever the organization is, if it's your firm, if it's a bar organization, a community organization, it's fueled by people that are willing to make the ask to be engaged to do greater things. People want folks at the table that add value to the room. Be one of those individuals that through your commitment, through your creativity, your initiatives, you're bringing added value and make sure that you do your due diligence to elevate the conversations once you're in the room. That's a part of building your reputation and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to give that effort. And I can tell you from my career, as far back as I can remember, both before I became a lawyer and since I've been a lawyer, with that effort, I've always been able to succeed. That's the interconnectedness between effort, build a reputation, and the success follows. So at this point in time, I've had a chance to challenge you to reflect upon what it takes to build that reputation, to reflect on what are you doing in your own life? Are you living the life that warrants the reputation you wish to have? We all have a desire to be thought upon in a certain fashion. It's, it's human nature. Nobody has a desire to have a bad reputation. We all want to be favored in our reputation in the eyes of whoever we select as our targeted desired community. We want to have that positive reputation. So I ask you to ask yourself that simple question again. Are you living the life 
that warrants the reputation you wish to have? That's a question that you should pause on, think about, and I'm going to challenge that reality check. It's very important. I, I reflected upon a book that I read many years ago, Seven, Effective, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. He's a great author, a mega seller. That book sold hundreds of millions of copies over time. And he had this exercise in there where he asked you to envision your funeral. He asked for you to picture three people getting up to say a few words about you, the type of person you were, what you stood for, how you lived. And I'll never forget that book that I read probably 15 plus years ago because that's a, a little chilling uh, request to envision your funeral. I'm going to ask you, let's do it the same exercise with a little twist. Imagine you have selected a couple of people to speak to you, speak on your reputation, your reputation as a lawyer, as a community servant, just as a person, family individual. Select those few people that you want to speak on it. And I want you to close your eyes and imagine what you want them to say about your reputation. Most people are going to want to be thought of as a reliable professional, smart, gets the job done. Those are some of the descriptions we want with regard to our professional speaker. We want them to say he was always someone that we could rely on, he worked with excellence, he got the job done, he went beyond the call of duty, it was timely, it was of the highest quality. All of those things that we want that individual speaking as a lawyer, he made a difference with his skill as a lawyer in his community and all of those that he interfaced with. Open your eyes and ask, is that the likely impression that people have of you? Again, are you living and doing and working on that reputation in the manner that you hope that people see it. It's so easy to get caught up in the demands of what we're doing until we take certain things for granted. I suggest to you that the reputation, the foundational basis that you're standing on throughout the remainder of your career is not something that you can take for granted. It's something that you have to know you must work on and not just work on blindly, but work on with focus, purpose, and true commitment. It's only then that you're going to select those people and when your career is all done, they'll truly speak the words you hope that you have earned over the course of your career, both as a lawyer, as a community servant, and as a person in your community. If you're not yet living the life and giving the commitment that you have to earn those type of testimonies about you, it's not too late to start working towards developing that reputation now. I hope in the course of this discussion that you recognize the importance of your reputation. And the reputation is not something that you just allow others to define. Your reputation is something that you can commit to and help shape but it's a commitment that you must put at the top of your list. Focus on it and do the things that are necessary. And I can tell you from my life, many of the rewards that I'm reaping today are based on the efforts that I've given. It was Mark Twain who said that if you give a man a reputation as being an early riser, he can sleep till noon. What did he mean by that? Your reputation develops momentum. That figure that Mark Twain talked about, he earned his reputation as an early riser, and henceforth, people saw him as that. Even if he slept on a given day to noon, what did people, in, uh, impression they have of him? He's an early riser. Your reputation has momentum, and that momentum can carry you to great heights. 
work on that reputation, commit to that reputation, and know that success will follow. Legal Fuel connects Florida bar members with strategic tools designed to help you fuel your law practice with increased efficiencies and profitability. Whether you want to launch a new firm, better market your services, or strengthen your internal operations, Legal Fuel provides attorneys with the resources you need to run your business smarter and more efficiently. Visit LegalFuel.com today to help manage your practice and fuel your business.